it's Lisa here, your English tutor every Monday after school. And what we're going to be talking about today is something that I hope a lot of you can take on board because I know that many of you out there do not necessarily enjoy English as much as I do. And that is okay. Sometimes as English students, we're just not in the mood to sit down to read a book or to write a particular essay or to do brainstorming. So what are the different ways that you can help improve your English writing skills without actually having to sit down and study specifically? The tips today will definitely help you. Now they might seem a little bit strange, but honestly say that over the years teaching English, these are tips that I've given students, especially students who are not innate writers. So students who really do struggle with the basic foundations of English and also just struggling to come up with ideas. So if you are this type of English student where you are definitely willing to work hard but you find it really difficult to express yourself or to articulate what you are wanting to say, then these tips will absolutely help you in that field. So let's get started. Number one, don't be generic. In your everyday life conversations, what you can do is actively try to improve the way that you express yourself. You can actively improve on the way you express yourself and what type of message you would like to get across. So even if it's as simple as, how are you Lisa? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Saying I'm good is a really normal thing to do, but I'm good has become so normal that it doesn't really mean that much. In fact, most of us just say I'm good even if we're not feeling good, even if we're feeling tired or frustrated or we might be actually feeling absolutely stoked that day, but we always just stick with saying I'm good. Why not try to branch out with your vocabulary? So instead say I'm flabbergasted, man, I am so so start. The more you begin to express yourself with different vocabulary and mix up the way that you deliver your message, this will also naturally impart itself in your writing because you're naturally allowing yourself to open the gate in terms of thinking differently and stretching away from just the norm. Two, stop being redundant. So like, have you ever noticed how like, in a lot of everyday conversations between people like you and me, like, you know, a lot of us like say the word like and you know. Try to clean up the excess fillers that you include in your conversation and it is going to be really hard because it's just something that naturally is ingrained in us because of the way society is and because of our surroundings and the people that we talk to, it's hard not to follow in suit. But if you actively think about, okay, how can I be more concise and more to the point with what I want to say, that will also naturally flow into your writing as well. Give it a shot. I promise it's going to work. Number three, tell stories. Undoubtedly, you are going to be telling stories, whether it's actual storytelling, so reading a fairy tale, for example, to your younger brother or little sister, or whether it's recapping a movie that you saw or a book that you read, or whether it's just a story of something that happened to you recently that you want to share with friends. We are constantly telling stories in our everyday lives. It's how a lot of us humans interact. So why not use this as an opportunity to practice the way that you express yourself? Some people are better storytellers than others and you have to think why. The better storytellers are usually the ones who are more engaging with how they deliver their story, they may create suspense, they may make it funny, and these are all things that you can also try to do yourself in order to then transfer it into your writing. So whether or not you're practicing creative writing or comedic writing or persuasive writing even, try to apply these skills in real life because it's a great way of practicing without actually having just to sit down at your computer or your notebook at the desk and just, you know, popping your head down. Number four, articulate yourself. A general trend I've found with the strongest students is that usually they're the type of people who are readily able to express themselves and they're more than willing to 
share their opinions and just chat away. Whereas with students who struggle with English writing, there does seem to be the correlation of the difficulty of being able to express themselves. So before you're even able to put something down on paper, you should be able to articulate it verbally as well. Verbally should in a lot of cases be easier than trying to write things down because you can just kind of let it let your stream of consciousness go and just talk about whatever the topic is whereas with writing there's that added pressure of ensuring that it's logical that your sentences grammar expression it all works if you present your argument and you talk about it whether or not it's talking about it with your friends parents teacher even yourself really then talking it through often helps the brain to consolidate exactly what your argument or your contention is and therefore from that point onwards it's much easier to transfer it and write it down on paper. So a good way of assessing whether or not you are ready to write that material down on paper is to just talk to yourself first, see if you can articulate the information that you want to share and if you can it's good to go. Number five, listen to others. This one really doesn't require that much work on your half, but listening to others is something that is definitely underrated when it comes to English writing. When you listen to other people, listen to the how they present themselves, listen to how they express the way of thinking, what words they like to use, what are their little quirks in how they carry conversation, because all this can help you in terms of formulating your own style of writing and your own way of delivering your message. So that is pretty much about it for this video. If you enjoyed these tips and if you're going to apply them, then please like this video so that I know and comment below. Let me know whether or not you struggle with any of these things that I've talked about today in terms of articulating yourself or using fillers in conversation, which I know I do as well. Though I am trying to become more concise with how I speak, but then at the same time, well, a conversation should still be fun. So don't just go ahead and, you know, analyze every single conversation that you come across. It's okay, just create a balance and it's always about balance between life and study as well. So if you didn't know already, our VC Study Guides workshops are coming up in only a couple of weeks. If you haven't secured a spot yet then please go ahead and do so thank you so much to everyone who did join in the competition we announced our winner last week if you didn't win then that's okay you are still more than welcome to come and I would absolutely love to meet all of you there the link just over here for you in regards to the workshop so that you can check it out other than that please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already I am Lisa and I cover English topics every single Monday after school sometimes I do go on tangents but generally most of the time it is to do with English studying so I'll see you guys next week